Hey YouTube, thank you for checking out our channel. Hope everyone is having a good week. Last week we talked about sexual immorality. And I made mention in last week's video that this week I wanted to talk about husbands and wives. And I decided this week we just want to focus on husbands. Um, and next week in part two we'll, we'll talk about wives. But in, ta in talking about husbands, uh, I heard a fellow say not too long ago, this fellow said something along the lines of, and actually this is the quote, he said that a husband needs to control his wife. And I wanted to see what the Bible actually says, because we're, we're big believers in speaking where the Bible speaks and being silent where the Bible is silent, and, and we, we need to make sure um, that, that we understand the husband and wife relationship as it is a, uh, the, the same sort of relationship that Jesus has with the church. So our, our study, and I wanted to start in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where we've been at, as we've been going through the letter to the Corinthians, but let's just see what it says. So pull out your Bibles, as usual, and, and let's see what God's Word actually is on husbands and wives. And we're just going to look at a few verses. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 34, it says, uh, pardon me, 1 Corinthians 7 uh, at verse 32, it says, but I want you to be... Without care, he who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Rather than saying, you know what, husbands need to control their wives. Let's, let's see what the Bible actually says. Because what the Bible says is, you know what, husbands, you need to worry about pleasing your wives. Husbands, we have been entrusted with something precious. And rather than using the authority given to us by the Lord, rather than acting like we are the dictator of the family, we need to understand that they have been entrusted to us. And we need to do everything that we can to be pleasing to them. I'm not saying that we sin or anything like that. I'm saying that we, we need to put them first. That doesn't mean that they are our head. That's not what I mean by that. I mean, as we're going to see, that we care about pleasing them. We care about pleasing them in the husband and wife relationship. Earlier in the chapter, at verse 4, it says, The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Husbands, you belong to your wives. You belong to them. And I understand something specific is probably being spoken about in those verses. But, but you belong to one another. Husbands, rather than lording it over your wife, understand, you belong to her. She married you and you married her. And when you did that, you were entering into the kind of relationship where you are hers. You belong to her. You need to worry. You need to think about you need to think about pleasing her. That's the sort of relationship that marriage is. Come up to 1 Peter. Up in 1 Peter chapter 3. In 1 Peter chapter 3 at verse 7. 1 Peter 3 at verse 7 it says, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding. Talking about wives. It says, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. It starts off and it says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them. There is something to be said about that. That husbands, you need to dwell with your wives. I have, we, we have seen far too many cases where husbands take some sort of occupation where basically they are never home. I don't care what the job is. I don't care what the job is. But a lot of times they are just never home. That is not conducive to a good relationship. It says husbands, dwell with them. Dwell with them. And don't just dwell with them. Dwell with them with understanding. Men and women are not created the same way. The Lord doesn't want men and women to be exactly the same. He created us this way for a reason. So dwell with your wives with understanding. Rather than saying, I need to control my wife, dwell with her with understanding. Think about how you may please her. Understand that you belong to her. It says honor, giving honor to the wife. That's what the Bible says. That's what God wants for husbands today. So many relationships explode 
and pieces are never picked up because husbands won't do this. They won't honor their wives. Proverbs, the very last chapter of Proverbs is about that virtuous woman. And it says at the very end of that, in verse uh, Proverbs 31 and verse 28, it says that her husband praises her. That is not done very often today. And that needs to change. Husbands, we need to praise our wives. We need to honor our wives. We need to dwell with them with understanding. And as the verse talks about being heirs together of the grace of life. We need to be spiritually minded. And, and as we grow together, as we grow together, hopefully what is happening is we are becoming more and more equally yoked. We're growing together. We are heirs together of the grace of life. We pray together. We worship together. We study together. We talk to each other about God's will in our lives and how we can help one another spiritually, physically, in every aspect. That's what husbands need to do. In 1 Peter, um, here in chapter 3, back at the top of the chapter, Back in verse 1, it says, Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives, when they observe their chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. I wanted to be sure to read that verse because what that shows is, um, ladies, uh, we'll mention this probably here in the second video. Ladies, um, if your husband is not what he needs to be, that does not give you the right to cast him away. That does not give you the right to spurn him. That does not give you the right to not be the sort of lady that the Lord wants you to be. Husbands, what I wanted to what I wanted to be sure to mention in this verse, when it says concerning these concerning these husbands who are perhaps not obedient, it says that the women need to act in such a way that husbands, when they observe their chaste conduct accompanied by fear, husbands observe your wives. And I'm not I'm not talking about eyeballing your wives. That's not what I'm talking about. And I don't think that's what scripture is talking about. Husbands appreciate the finer things about your wife. And what this verse is talking about when it says, don't let your adornment be merely outward, but rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. Rather let it be the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Um, there's nothing wrong with finding your wives physically attractive, but appreciate their nature. Appreciate those things that are incorruptible. Observe those things. Notice those things. Recognize those things about your wife. And appreciate them and let her know that you appreciate them. Let her know how much you love her and let her know how much you appreciate her when she's behaving in a godly way. There's a whole lot more to marriage than, than the bedroom. Let me put it like that. In Colossians, in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3 at verse 19 it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Do not be bitter towards them. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like the man who says, you know what? Husbands need to control their wives. I, I wonder if that is not, especially in the context, as it says, as it talks about there in verse 18, wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives Love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. That when wives submit, the easy thing to do is for husbands to walk all over them and to be bitter towards them. And husbands, do not do that. Do not be bitter towards your wife. Do not treat your wife like a man. Do not have, do not have that expectation of her. Do, do not treat her in, in such a way that drives a wedge between you and her. The last verse I wanted to consider is Ephesians 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, at verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. How did Christ, the groom, love his bride, the church? He sacrificed himself for her. Husbands, what do we need to do for our wives? 
We love them. We love our wives. We love our wives just as Christ loved the church. And just as Christ gave himself for the church, what do we do, husbands? We give ourselves for our wives, is what the verse says. In verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And that's the thing. When husbands start treating their wives in a godly fashion, when husbands start treating their wives like the Lord actually wants them to, as the Lord has actually revealed how husbands need to treat their wives, lo and behold, what happens? The marriage starts flourishing. The marriage becomes what it needs to be. It is the best thing for a husband when a husband sacrifices himself for his wife. When a husband recognizes these things that we're talking about and he applies them to his life, it's the best thing for him as he considers her. As the verse goes on, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Nourishes and cherishes. Literally, it's the word for fosters. It is the idea. It's helping your wife. Husbands, don't lord it over your wives. Help them. Help them. Help the, you know, people always, you go back to the garden and what is Eve called? A help me, right? And people say, you know, well, who's the helper? Well, that's the woman's job. No, we're one flesh. We help one another. We help one another. So husbands, help your wives. Nourish, cherish, appreciate, love them. Love them just as Christ loved the church is what we're called to do. Hope you've enjoyed this study. Like I said, the next, next week's video is going to be about wives. Hope you're able to check that one out. But I appreciate you studying with us. I hope you have a good week. God bless you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, thank you for watching.